Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from Egatsec. So here on my table, I've got the latest and greatest gaming phone from Asus, which is the Asus ROG Phone 6. It took a while to get here, but it's finally on my table and I'm going to do a quick unboxing for you guys. So we'll find out whether this ROG Phone 6 is a worthy upgrade to the ROG Phone 5, which I've got sitting on my table, sitting right next to it. So what are we waiting for guys? Let's get this unboxing started. Alright, so, so you've got the Republic of Gamers logo on the front, ROG Phone 6 at the bottom, and as you can tell from the logo at the bottom right here, it is the Tencent Games Edition. And as I've made known to you guys, I tend to prefer the Tencent Games version or the Tencent Games Edition because the Chinese version tends to get a lot more updates and they tend to get those updates more frequently. At the right side, more ROG Phone 6 label, ROG on the left side, Republic of Gamers at the top and at the back you've got so this is the 12 gig of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 GB of storage which I've mentioned a lot of times on the channel is the sweet spot for gaming phones right now. Anything more than 12 in my opinion is just for bragging rights and to be honest guys there really isn't any game out now that will take advantage of the full 12 GB of RAM that you can get on any of these gaming phones. So let's go ahead and unbox this. So I've already removed the plastic. Let me just slide it down. Okay, it's pretty different this year, guys. If you remember on the ROG Phone 5, they've got something that folds out and then you've got some uh, animation and comics inside. But in this case, it is a standard unboxing affair. So if you've seen one unboxing video, then this unboxing video is not going to be much different. You've got something here. Seems like a key card, uh, join the Republic for those who dare. It seems like an identification code or an ID card. And inside this packaging, so let's see here. It's your standard SIM ejector tool. And you've got, of course, your free case. I'm most probably going to be using it because I am using the free case that came on the ROG Phone 5. So let me just open it up. So compared to last year's uh, protective case or the free case that came with it, this actually covers a lot more of the back and it's probably not going to be compatible with the new Aero Active Cooler 6. And it has a kind of a checkered pattern. I actually like the the matte feel of the ROG Phone 5 case better than this year's model. But of course, it's all personal preference. I like the design and the texture of this over the new one that came with the ROG Phone 6. And let's see what else is in here. So you've got stickers and your ROG Phone user guide. And there is the phone, guys. I forgot to mention, I did manage to get my hands on the white version. Before I go ahead and remove the plastic from the phone, let's see what else is inside the case. Seems to be the same 65 watt uh, hypercharger that came on the ROG Phone 5. So you've got the USB-C to USB-C charging cable, uh, which is the braided type. So pretty standard stuff with uh, ASUS. So it's the same unboxing experience as ROG Phone 5. If you've got an ROG Phone in the last couple of years, then you can probably just reuse the cable that came with it and uh, keep this in the box, which is what I tend to do. And I've got the phone here, guys. Let me remove the case from the ROG Phone 5 so we can make proper comparison. Okay, with that done, let's remove the plastic. Okay, I just tend to slide mine down. Don't really need to destroy the plastic in that way. There you go, guys. So, quick comparison. Size-wise, nothing much has changed. Uh, it's just that the camera bump on the back is a lot larger. And the uh, ROG RGB light at the back seems to be a bit smaller this year on the ROG Phone 6. But we'll go ahead and test that RGB light later in the video. So for now, let's go ahead and turn on the phone. So looking at it from the front, guys, nothing much has changed. So this is, like I said, this is the Tencent version. So you've only got a couple of Chinese languages. And of course, I'll be picking English. You've got end user license agreement. Plus next. Accept. Uh, enable all services. And next. Let's search for Wi-Fi. So I guess I can do a quick fingerprint setup. And we're done. So similar to the ROG Phone 5 experience, you've got an interactive uh, boot up screen. Let's go ahead and uh, click on enter the city and see what this is all about.
this is uh, what I wanted to find out, guys. I did think that this actually played a role in that interactive uh, boot up screen. So let's go ahead and scan the card. So let's click on continue. Keep a distance of 25 centimeters to the card when scanning. Okay. And make sure your fingers are not obscuring the lens for the best AR experience. Okay. So let's move all these things aside. So we've got room for the identification card. Let's click continue. Welcome to the Armory Crate AR. This app uses augmented reality technology to provide a special unboxing experience. And by default, of course, it's set to use uh, gestures. But what I usually do is, I nah, just skip that. I already know how to use gesture mode. You can skip. And I'll go ahead and set up. So let me change the system navigation to what I'm used to, which is a navigation bar. And I actually prefer it in this way. And there you go. So now we know what this one is and you're probably not going to have any use for it after that initial setup. So you can just set it aside, put it back in the box, probably forget about it. So before I go ahead and do any kind of testing on the phone, let me go through some quick specs on the phone. So we'll know the basic difference between the ROG Phone 5 and the ROG Phone 6. So this year, the ROG Phone 6, they actually skipped the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and went straight to the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, which they are claiming that is 15% faster in terms of the CPU performance, 50% faster GPU performance, a 20% improved CPU power efficiency, and you can actually get the ROG Phone 6 in several variants, you can get up to 18 GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 512 GB of UFS 3.1 storage. If you're going to go for the higher RAM and storage versions, you're going to be paying a premium for those. So I went with the 12 GB of LPDDR5 RAM and 256 GB of storage, which as I mentioned earlier in the video, is the sweet spot for any gaming phone right now. And what they're claiming this year is since that uh, CPU power efficiency is 20% improved, the new cooling system that they've got in place, which they're calling GameCool 6, it is designed to deal with the heat that's generated by this Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip. It has a 30% larger vapor chamber, an 85% larger graphite sheet, and it has a centered CPU design. So what does that mean in terms of cooling? So if you're going to be using a gaming cooler like the Black Shark Fun 2 Pro or maybe the Red Magic Turbo Cooler, since most of the time you're going to be putting the cooler at the center of the phone, they've made a change on the design that they put the CPU at the center of the phone so it gets the maximum benefit by using any of those coolers. And with the change that they made this year to the cooling system, they are claiming that they've used aerospace grade thermal compound which has more than 20% improved heat conductivity. So that means that it's going to take heat away from from the hot CPU a lot more effectively and is going to keep the temperature of this phone down. So really interested in seeing that in action because one of my main complaints with the ROG Phone 5 is that this tends to run pretty hot and because it's running hot, it's dialing its performance down in order to make sure that you don't damage any of the internals of the phone. Because of that improvement in the cooling system, they did come up with a new and improved AeroActive Cooler 6. Now it's no secret that I've always been claiming on the channel that the AeroActive 
coolers being released by Asus for its ROG phone lineup is overpriced and it doesn't really cool very well. And Asus actually finally did something about it. So the Aero Active Cooler 6 is finally a thermoelectric cooler. So that means Asus has in some way admitted that their Aero Active coolers with their fan blowing design is not enough to cool their ROG gaming phones. And once that Aero Active Cooler 6 has come in, I'm definitely going to be putting this phone through its paces. So make sure that you've subscribed to the channel and you've turned the notifications on so you'll be the first to know once that video is up. So what's new this year in terms of the display is that the ROG Phone 6 now has a higher refresh rate. It can now run up to 165Hz compared to the 144Hz on the ROG Phone 5. The ROG Phone 6 still has the same 6.78 inch uh, Samsung AMOLED display and it still carries the HDR10 Plus certification, eye care display, and the same DC dimming advantage that the ROG Phone 5 has. Though what is improved this year is that the ROG Phone 5 only had a 300Hz touch sampling rate while on the ROG Phone 6 and it's more than doubled. It now now has a 720 hertz touch sampling rate. The touch latency has been improved by a bit. On the ROG Phone 5 is 24.3 milliseconds and on the ROG Phone 6 it's now at a lower 23 milliseconds. So it's going to be a lot more responsive especially during hectic gaming sessions. As I mentioned before, the ROG Phone 5 has Gorilla Glass Victus protection on the display and it's the same protection this year on the ROG Phone 6. In terms of the brightness guys, they both have a typical max brightness of 800 nits and a peak brightness of 1 1,200 nits in direct sunlight. And in terms of what else is different this year guys, on the ROG Phone 6, the air triggers have finally evolved. So it has new gestures that you can make use of. It still retains the tap, of course that's there, but it now has horizontal slide, vertical slide, it has swipe, it has dual partition, dual control, dual action, press and lift, which is a feature that uh, Nubi actually implemented first on their uh, Red Magic lineup and uh, Asus has followed suit. You've got gyroscope aiming, so what that means is you press a button and you're going to be using the phone to control your aim. So I'm not sure how well that will translate to real gaming, but I'm going to dedicate a separate video on that and show you how to configure the controls and how I actually feel about those new gesture controls. Another upgrade to the ROG Phone 6 is the haptic feedback. So the X-axis linear motor is actually has 130 Hz vibration frequency. It has a 20% improved energy consumption. So if you turn vibration on, it's not going to use as much battery power or is not going to consume much of your battery when compared to the RG Phone 5. And it has an 80% improved vibration acceleration. So what that means is you're going to feel the vibration pretty much in sync with the action that you're seeing on screen. Another evolution that they're saying is done with the Game Genie. What they're saying is it now resembles a spacecraft HUD. So let's go ahead and see how that will go. I don't really have any games. Okay, I don't really have any games installed yet, so I'm not be going to be able to see how that will look. But before I go ahead and install any games on the phone, let's go ahead and see the lighting options. So all you need to do is go to advanced settings. Once you click on it, you've got options. So you can control the color. So let's say I put it to green. The, your dare to play uh, RGB light will be on that color. And of course, on your ROG logo, you can change it to a couple of options. Tend to keep it on rainbow, so it's going to go through all the colors that is available on that RGB light. So in terms of the battery this year, it still retains that dual 3000 mAh battery. It still has the same 65 watt hypercharger, but instead of 52 minutes now, they've cut down the charging time to 42 minutes when going from 0 to 100. But of course, I'm going to be testing that charging speed on my usual battery drain test as well as my battery charging test.
So I'm not sure if the cameras have been improved this year guys because the camera bump has become a lot larger though in terms of the megapixel count the ROG Phone 5 had the IMX686 64 megapixel camera while this year it's using an IMX766 but it's only 50 megapixels. So pretty curious to see whether that 50 megapixel is a downgrade or an upgrade in terms of the camera quality. In terms of the ultra wide it still retains that 13 megapixel ultra wide and that 5 megapixel macro. The selfie camera as well has a bit of a downgrade. Last year it was 24 megapixels and this year it's down to just 12 megapixels. And one of the improvements or changes on the ROG Phone 6 is it, ha it now carries a tri-band Wi-Fi so it has support for the 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz and as well as the latest 6 gigahertz channels now of course i'm still running 5 gigahertz band and i'm not going to be able to make much use of that uh, 6 gigahertz frequency yet but i guess this is just asus making sure that it's future proofing its phone The ROG Phone 5 has one of the best sounding speakers on a mobile phone that I've tested. So let's see if the ROG Phone 6 can match or even beat the sounds that you're getting from the ROG Phone 5. Alright, speaker test running between the ROG Phone 6 at the top and the ROG Phone 5 at the bottom. So let's make sure that the volume is max on both phones. Let's start with the ROG Phone 6 first. It sounds pretty full guys, there is a hint of bass and pretty impressed with the ROG Phone 6 but let's test out the ROG Phone 5 in comparison next. RG Phone 5 sounds a bit louder. Let's try again. Too close to tell guys, but they both sound very impressive to me. So let me know in the comment section down below which speaker system sounded better to you. The ROG Phone 6 at the top or the ROG Phone 5 at the bottom. Of course, I'm going to be doing my own benchmark test and gaming test on this ROG Phone 6. And I'm pretty sure that you guys are interested in finding out whether the ROG Phone 6 is worth upgrading to, especially if you've already got an ROG Phone 5. Now, I have a lot of complaints about the ROG Phone 5 in terms of the temperature and performance. And I am hoping that Asus actually addressed all the problems that they've had on the ROG Phone 5. So with that said, I guess I'll go ahead and end this quick unboxing and comparison video between the ROG Phone 5 and the ROG Phone 6. I'm going to go ahead and start with the benchmark test and the performance and throttling test. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click on the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when that video is up. So with that said, I would highly appreciate a sub on the channel. So please like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification, and see you all on my next one.